Hey, it's 40 past the hour. We're going to talk to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Folks, if you get a chance, head on over to the front page of TFNN. Teddy writes an outstanding newsletter. Weekly comes out every Monday, the Tiger Forex Report. You can check that out for only $97 a month. 30-day money-back guarantee. You got archive webinars in there as well. And you got under the services tab, a couple great webinars capitalizing on time with calendar stock option spreads with Teddy Kegstat and Japanese candlestick pattern stock and option strategies with Teddy. And as I mentioned, folks, head over, get some Tiger Dollars, and maybe use some of those bonus Tiger Dollars for some of those great webinars out there in that newsletter. Teddy Kegstat, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Uh, it seems like Wednesdays we always got action, man. We got action a lot lately, but boy, we got some action today. We got some action in currencies as well. Dollar trading a little bit lower. Uh, where do you want to kick things off, man? Uh, I think what we need to do is uh, talk about the numbers. Okay. So, um, you know, last week CPI was a number that uh, the talking heads, everyone was all happy about it that, oh, oh great, it was... Um, uh, it, it was a little bit less than expected, um, but month over month, it was nice. And they're like, oh, inflation is curbing, but year over year, it was actually, it was increasing. Um, the same thing with retail sales that came out yesterday. Um, the reaction is, and you can tell how the algos drive short-term news, and this is where AI gets it wrong. Um, and that's why you got to worry about the computers, because they look at things in a mathematical basis they don't look at it in a human context um ai no matter what doesn't go to the gas station once or twice a week to fill up their car you know they don't go to the store to buy food for their children and what have you um so you can talk about the numbers all you want and you know that i've been saying this now for two years that the economic numbers will drive the bond market the currency markets and and they are doing that and you cannot say that it is not more exemplary than it has been last week and yesterday by the moves that um, they weren't good numbers. They were talked as and touted as being, oh, it's fantastic. Look at there's a change. Um, no, it's a short term little blip that year over year on both numbers are not fantastic by any means. You're looking at it on a monthly basis and it's reactionary by the bond market, especially the, the 30 year and the 10 year. Um, if you really look at the charts, especially the euro, the, at the ATR, the average true range, um, except for a couple of currencies, isn't really moving very much. You know, you, the pound has moved, um, the Australian dollar and a couple other currencies have moved, but the euro, if you look at it, look at how tight it's really been, even on a daily range. So um, I, I have to say that honestly, where we're at, like I know now we're talking, you were mentioning the CME index with the possible rate hike. I yeah. said right in front of the, elec the election, if anything, they, the Fed could possibly help to juice the election, you know, come September, but there is no war warranted reason by any economic data, even if it was to even, there's no way it can catch up in front of the election. So this is just a precursor, you know, I mean, if 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 a 0.1% move in CPI month over month, but not year over year is what's going to drive your 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 uh, choices in uh, whether you trade this way or that way. Um, well, good luck to you. You know, um, so I I, uh, I have to say um, we have a very interesting time. Actually, this is a good good segment to have because those numbers you can throw them out the window. If you're going to actually base your trading off of those, um, well then yeah, then follow the talking heads. For the next two months and good luck with that trade and see what it does because the bond market actually in the 10 if you look at the 30 year and the 10 year and how they've actually reacted over the past like week let alone two weeks in the midst of all this where have they gone you know where's the euro gone you know the pound is fluctuating but oh that's right the pound is that's fluctuating because the uk had an election you had a major shift in um, potential leadership in parliament there, you know, as far as how things are going to go. That's why the pound has moved. But the euro, and look at the Swiss. The Swiss, the yen, obviously we know the yen has been moving around. and But that's a whole, that's completely removed from the currency trade because of the way it's been over the past few months. I mean, you have volatility in the yen that you normally would not have. I mean, you can look at the, at the, just the way it moved in the, in the, over the past week, you know, um, without having any major economic 
I mean, there is no cataclysm or any real economic news to move the yen the way it has moved. You know, it's, it's basically because it's at the levels that it's at. And it, this has to do a lot with algo trading, too. If you look at the volumes, um, this is not like um, speculators, you know, or traders that are helping to push these moves. These are algo moves. There's vacuums in volume, you know, so they're pushing it, you know, and that's where you got to be very careful. And, I, and I've said this before over the past few months, like be careful trading markets like the yen, you know, because of the fact that the volatility is very extreme and it's not extreme because of what's going on in the world. Yeah, you're, 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 it's the computers are running the whole thing, really, you know. Some great information, man. I appreciate it. It is interesting. I was jumping through those charts as you were talking about. I got the yen up here. We see the move, of course. Um, but the euro, and I remember talking to you two or three weeks ago or some, and about this euro, and it is remarkable, man. I mean, even you put it on a weekly, and you go back to the beginning of 2023, and we're talking about over a year and a half now, and you're basically between 105 and 110, which is a remarkable area right. of a tight range when you think about where – Market expectations, inflation of expectations, yields, all of that and, have been. And look at the, the dollar last. index. You are hitting it, yeah. Tommy, and the nail on the head. The euro is the biggest component of the dollar index. The dollar index is moving, and the euro isn't. Usually, you yeah. can track the dollar index by the euro. They're almost not completely the same chart, but they're very similar as far as moves. You have the euro that's going this way. You have the yen that's obviously going this way, and you actually have a pound that's moving this way that's had a nice breakout, and you have the Aussie dollar. Ironically, New Zealand dollar hasn't broken out like the Aussie. Usually, they're in, in somewhat of a tandem relationship. It has; it's not the same. You know, we, I've been talking like the Tiger Forex support, like writing every week for lately. You know, certain markets. You know, I hate this. You know, it's it's tough when you're like, sorry, um, we got nothing happening this week yeah. ahead. You know, you always want to have like some. You know, a customer wants like Teddy. Where's the buy? Where's the sell? Where's the move? Where's you know what? I, I'm I'm giving you the honest opinion and what I believe in. And also, guess what? I do give you tomorrow's Wall Street Journal today. We've been in a sideways range trade for a lot of markets. Like, it is what it is. Like, you, you can't force a trade. And that's something that I've talked to you about and I write it in the report. You, you can't force a trade. You know, having a good work ethic, you know, going to work every day, getting up every day to go to work is one thing. But being a trader is not like having a job. It's a business, you know. So, um, you know, you go to a job every day. If you're a union job or whatever, whether you're whether it rains or pours, if you're a, if you're laying in cement and it's raining for five days, you're not pouring cement, but you're getting paid. You know, as a trader, yeah. you can show up and the cement truck can be there and you want to lay cement. And guess what? It ain't getting laid. And if it does, you're going to spend even more money, you know? So, and that's how it is. And it's the kind of environment patience, we're in right, right now. Patience, 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 sometimes. patience. Best, I mean, in many aspects of life, but I, I agree, man. It's great advice. Listen to that one, folks. Patience. Sometimes the best thing is to do nothing. Teddy, I appreciate the time as always, man. Thanks, Look forward Tommy. to talking to you next week. Okay, have a great week. Stay tuned, Let's folks. Let's catch we'll a move. Right back. <laughs>